take a look at how we go ahead and modify our calendar in our WordPress site. We want to go to, if we're not already on it, the website itself, but make sure that you're logging in um, by going to WP WordPress admin, and that's going to take you to the login page. Every user has their unique username and password. I'm going to go ahead and log in. It's going to bring me to my dashboard. So on the dashboard, um, I have a lot of stuff, but this is this is what we want to worry about. So we've got my calendar right here, and we can add new events, manage those events, manage categories, manage locations, manage groups. So a lot of stuff going on. You can also just come up here, and it's a quick menu. So if I go to add event, it's going to give me some different options. So I'm going to do a test event, just test. Um, I can write a little something about it. Like, come to the awesome rock show. Yay! Okay. If you want, you can add an image. And you may have to upload one. Now, this is the host or the user that's presenting this message. So, you want to make sure that you're picking your name. You can choose to have a unique URL or not, but you don't need to worry about that, usually. So date and time, you can enter your date, you can enter from when to when, and you can just straight up type it in if you don't want to use their little list, that's fine. Um, make sure you put AM or PM, right? AM, and then, or you can use their little scrolly thing. You can also say it's an all day event if you don't want to put in a time. You can do an end date where it starts and ends over multiple days. You can also add another occurrence. So maybe it's two days, but it's just some hours on two days. So you could do that. I could say, okay, it happens on the eighth as well. And this is a multi-day event. So you can have, again, multiple occurrences. You can also repeat occurrences. Um, I've done this for the meetings themselves. Most of the things are not going to reoccur. But, you know, you'd have repeats uh, one time every one week, for instance, for uh, once a week. If you have any of these notes that you care about, um, by all means. But it's really meant for tickets and sort of events. So we probably won't worry about that much. But if you are having an event and you want to make sure there's interpretation or um, real-time captioning, there you go. I have some preset events I've created, and we'll look at how to do that, but I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, it's at the library. And you can cancel it if it's on a holiday. Um, and then this is about reoccurring because months aren't evenly based, so you can move them back a week if something falls on the fifth week of the month in only four weeks. Anyway, calendars are weird. So we'll go ahead and save that event. It'll appear on the calendar. So if I go to manage events, or I could go up to here, events or manage events, either please. You can see that I have, because I had multiple instances of it, because it occurred over two days. Here we go, I've got two instances of it. This is the category that it's in. So I may need to edit that category. So this is class category. The way I have set up, have it set up is that classes appear on the general calendar, but on the classes calendar, only classes appear. So you can isolate calendars to only have certain categories appear on them. So in this case, again, the class calendar only has classes. Um, the general calendar has everything. So I may just put this as a, okay, it's a field trip. And if I change that, we'll notice that the color changes when I go to manage my events, field trip. And I'm going to go ahead and visit the site. I'm opening it in a new tab so we still stay in our dashboard too. And we'll see that here's my calendar. Here's today. If I click it, here's the test one that I put in. And here's the monthly meeting. Oops. And if I click it, it brings me back to that.
<clears throat> now, if I want to remove an event, I can select it and delete events or archive them if I want to put them in the archive and not see them on this page and only see active events. If you want to create new categories for the events, this is what I have right now. Um, you can give it a name and a color and a little icon is to differentiate everything. You can also manage your locations. So if you wanted to add a new location, for instance, a location of a field trip, you could do that in here. Then you would be able, see here are the existing ones, and you'd be able to choose that as a preset on your event. So you could go back and fix it and put it there, or you could create your location first and then go and create your event. For the most part, you won't need to worry about styles, um, groups, if you have a certain group you're trying to access, um, specifically just for mass changes and things. But again, in this situation, we probably won't be using that too much. All right, so that's the basics of how to do the calendar. And let me go back and just show you guys what it looks like. So there's the calendar. We can go to different months and we've got different things happening. And I'll check and make sure the maps load up properly. And under the workshop, I have just the workshop stuff. So there's not gonna be actually anything on there right now because there are no classes. But one day there will be. All right, so that's the basics of how to use the calendar.